In this video, I'll show you how to assign the necessary sensor settings to the measurement channels. We'll first use sensors with TEDs, then we'll use sensor settings from the sensor database. We'll create our own sensors in the sensor database using two different methods, and finally, we'll modify a TED sensor and create a TED sensor. We'll start using sensors with TEDs. TEDS stands for Transducer Electronic Data Sheet and is ultimately nothing other than a chip containing information about the sensor. This TEDS chip can be integrated in the transducer itself or in the connector of the sensor. In this video, I'll use the Universal Module MX840B. Let's get started. Connect the sensors. The DAC device detects that a sensor has been connected, searches for a TEDS, finds the TEDS, and adjust the scaling and supply to suit the sensor. The software also recognizes that new sensors have been connected, updates the displays, and is ready for measurement. Ready. Now assign names to the channels. Set force and path to zero and you can start the first measurement. If you have no sensors with TEDs, use the sensor database. This is also very simple. This type U9C force transducer with 100 Newton nominal load has no TEDs chip. I'm connecting the sensor to channel four. Many sensors have already been stored in the sensor database. You can search for the sensor in the individual categories. However, using the search function of the sensor database is much easier. Type in U9C, and here's the sensor. Even 9C, a part of the sensor name, is enough to find the sensor. With drag and drop, I drag the sensor to the channel it is connected to. Now a window with a dialog opens. Why? Because the database initially only contains the nominal values of the sensor. Of course, our sensor has very specific values which can be found in the calibration protocol. Therefore, enter your sensor's sensitivity value here. That's it. I'll also assign a name to this channel and carry out a zero adjustment. Now I can start the measurement. Now this is not only tedious, but also error prone if you have to enter the sensor parameters every time you use a sensor. Therefore, we'll now store these settings permanently in the sensor database. Click on sensor database to display all the sensors that are stored in the sensor database in a tree structure on the left hand side. There you can also find our U9C 100 Newton sensor. However, it would be wrong to simply change the sensitivity value of the already created sensor U9C 100 Newton. If you later purchase another sensor of the same type, it will of course have a slightly different sensitivity value. This would lead to conflicts. Therefore, these sensor groups are protected, hence the lock. This means you'll have to create your own sensor. The My Sensors area is intended for this purpose. Your sensors belong here. The easiest way is to copy an already existing sensor and paste it into the group. Then you only have to modify the sensor data a little. First, I'll change the name. I'll append the last three digits of the serial number to the name, and then enter our sensor's sensitivity value. Finally, I'll remove this check mark so that I won't be prompted to enter the password in the future. The input of further parameters like comment or calibration date is optional. With update sensor, all settings are applied. Now you have created your first own sensor. I'm now also assigning this sensor to the channel. However, you can also enter sensors for which no direct template exists. My new sensor is a flow sensor that provides a 4 to 20 milliamp signal at the output and has a measuring range of 500 liters per minute. So at 0 liters per minute, the sensor delivers 4 milliamps, and at 500 liters per minute, the sensor delivers 20 milliamps. How do you create such a sensor? Click on Own Sensors, New Sensor, enter a name, and choose the type. Here it is not a matter of what the sensor measures, for example flow, but the electrical interference to the DAC device is essential. 
Therefore, current is the right choice here. If the sensor can be powered by the electronics of the Quantum X, for example, enter the supply voltage here. Most Quantum X modules can supply 0.7 watts per channel and max 2 watts per module. The possible supply voltage is between 5 volts and 24 volts, independent of the module supply. Now switch to the transducer characteristic curve. Here you can use different methods to define the scaling. But when do you use which method? If you use a high precision sensor, the polynomial of the sensor is usually stored in the calibration protocol. Then use the polynomial. If you have a table with values in different levels in the calibration protocol, use the table. If the definition of the sensor's physical measuring range does not start with zero, use the two-point scaling. In all other cases, simply use the zero-point span method. If the DAC device you are using does not support the desired scaling, Catman automatically creates the desired scaling in the software without you having to configure it. In this way, Catman is the perfect complement to the respective hardware. Please note that the measuring module does not take over the scaling. However, this is only essential if you want to output the measured values within the hardware, Quantum X, MGC Plus, or PMX, via CAN, EtherCAT, Profinet, an analog output, or the AB22A. If this is important to you, create a scaling in the sensor database that is supported by your hardware and create another scaling in the online calculations or the calculations in analysis mode. Back to my flow sensor. Here I select zero point span and enter the required parameters. Four milliamps correspond to zero liters a minute and 20 milliamps correspond to 500 liters a minute. Under general, you can enter additional parameters. Finally, click update sensor. Done. I now connect a four to 20 milliamp simulator to channel five. With this, I can simulate my flow sensor. Now I can assign my sensor from the sensor database. Here you can take a look at the actual input signal. In my example, the signal in milliamps. This is helpful if you want to search for possible error causes. Finally, I'll show you how to modify or program TEDS data yourself. First, I'll modify the TEDS of the C9B. Right click on C9B TEDS and select Edit Sensor. This allows me to edit the transducer's characteristic curve and store a different sensitivity value. Finally, click on Apply to C9B 200 Newton above. Confirm the prompt, wait for a while, and the success message is displayed. To prove it, I'll replug the sensor. Here's where the sensor appears now. If I right-click on Edit Sensor again, you will see the change sensitivity value. Creating a new TED sensor is also very easy. I connect a sensor with an empty TEDS, for example, without any data. This is also a C9B200 Newton. So I simply load a C9B200 Newton into the sensor and then modify the sensor. I simply drag this sensor onto the channel to which the sensor with the empty TEDS is connected. Now I am asked what I want to do. Just configure the channel or write it into the TEDS chip. Write into the TEDS chip, of course. Afterwards, I adjust the sensor a little bit with edit and save the settings in the TEDS. With this knowledge, you can now assign sensor settings to the channels, create your own sensors, and create and modify the TEDS. Professional trainings are available at our HBK Academy for beginners and advanced, of course, also for Catman. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact us. See you next time.